guys, welcome back to another video. Okay, so 10 years later, NECA finally got around to releasing the ultimate version of one of my favorite horror slashers of all time. And of course, that is Jason Voorhees. But this one's from Friday the 13th, the 2009 remake, reboot, whatever the heck it is. I got my grubby little hands on it, but I don't only have one. Nope, I got two, and you guys know what that means. Stay tuned for the end of the video, and you're gonna find out how you can win this guy right here. Let's go. All right, guys, so check out the box art on this. And just to show you, I'm gonna actually have that same artwork as my screensaver. The 2009 movie was released February 13, 2009, which was actually on my birthday. So that was a great birthday present to myself. Me and a couple buddies went to see that in the theaters and I absolutely loved it. Check out Jason here. So badass. And then, the back here, we have Jason Voorhees posed up with all his different weapons, which we'll go over soon. But I'm a little confused about this one. He's standing next to a campfire. That does not come in this package. That actually comes in the Friday the 13th part two as an accessory. And you can see Jason there and there's the campfire there. But he does not come with this in this edition so um, I'm guessing just for the picture but I wish they really wouldn't do that you look at the back and some people might think that uh, it comes with a campfire which it does not I guess it's not too hard to just turn it around and open up the flap of the ultimate box art and you can see the man himself Jason Voorhees looking badass as ever you can see the alternate heads the weapons here enough of the box let's break them open as always, I like to show the backdrop NECA likes to give you with these uh, ultimate figures. Same flimsy cardboard. But the actual picture, the photograph on here is pretty awesome. Check that out. So this is a very nice backdrop. All right, so the man himself, Jason Voorhees, in all of his glory from the 2009 remake. I'm just going to call it the reboot. All right, so the 2009 reboot. And he's a very different looking Jason Voorhees. As, as you can see, um, a lot of you might not be used to seeing this hair the way it is. It's one of the very rare occasions Jason Voorhees has hair like this. And it's blonde and uh, in the movie, even though I've seen it a few times, it doesn't really stand out as Jason having the hair. I know they're trying to, you know, make him look exactly like the movie, so it's not the figure's fault, it's not NECA's fault, but it does kind of look strange. Um, Jason Voorhees, in my opinion, doesn't look like he should have hair. He looks more like a wrestler in this in this form. You know, he's got the jacket, you know, the the uh, the pants, the the straps around his legs here. Right there, a little buckle. Got the hair, the mask. He looks like he should be running out into the ring and uh, knocking Vince McMahon over the head with a chair or something. I don't know. That's just my opinion. It doesn't take away from the figure. It's still an incredible looking figure. I mean, he looks extremely creepy and actually kind of cool. Does it fit Jason Voorhees? I don't know, that's up for you to decide. Leave a comment below what you guys actually think of this look. So, you can see for the 09 re or sorry <laughs> reboot, the mask is slightly different. Um, you got these more angled sides here, and of course he retained the same red marks above his eyes there. As we go down to the jacket, the jacket actually looks very cool. It's made of this really soft plasticky material. Um, you can see it can completely move around, even in the back here, it moves up and down. Um, over his shoulders, these little flaps here. So this is actually really cool. I do like the jacket and I like the designs on the back. I really, really like the jacket that he wore in the movie. And if we focus on his shirt here, very worn, very dirty, uh, torn up shirt. You can see some, some marks in it here where he has holes all through his shirt. Move on down to his pants. And, and as you can see here, he has some rips in his jeans and his knees. 
Um, I've seen some reviewers with uh, some pretty bad paint jobs on his knee, but my paint job isn't that bad, actually. It actually looks pretty good. And around his leg here, we have this little strap. Now the strap is attached to the holster where he can hold his machete um, so it doesn't move too much while he's running around trying to kill people. And the machete does fit in his holster. Maybe that's why he has all these cuts on his leg. I don't know because this machete is actually freaking huge. Now let's take a look at this uh, very, very controversial hair. Um, for what it is, it actually looks very, very nice. I know Mezco released a 2009 reboot, Jason. I didn't really like the hair on that, but the hair, for what it is, actually looks better than that version. Um, but the problem lies when I take the mask off. And you're gonna see, not the face, because the face is actually pretty freaking awesome. Look at that mean mug. Actually, the face here is one of my favorites from uh, NECA for the Ultimate Series. This face just looks gruesome. Look at his eye there, just in his, his lip. And the detail in that face is incredible. But when I turn it around, and this is what I'm talking about, where the hair was underneath the strap, it looks like he just has some hair plugs there. So on the top, it actually looks very nice. Go focus, there we go. Down here, it almost looks like they just said screw it and just painted everything blonde where maybe it should have had some skin, t some uh, flesh colors, some skin tone in between the hair. I don't know, but I'm not the biggest fan of what they did with the back of his head. Um, but most of the time I'll have this mask on him. And like you saw before, it'll just cover up perfectly right where that line is. So it's not like it's a huge focus. It's not like it's a huge deal breaker but I really wish they could have did something with that back. Now, if I get in a little closer onto his face, you can see that gnarly looking eye there. That actually is very, very well painted. If you guys have seen that Mezco 2009 reboot Jason, the eye looks terrible. Bruh. So NECA really nailed it when compared to that Mezco figure. They just nailed this face. Also, if you guys can take a closer look at this mask, it's very well weathered. Uh, looks very old, which, you know, he found the mask. I believe it was in an attic in the movie. And uh, it wasn't new by any means. So I think they actually nailed this mask too. Um, the straps on the back, of course, are very, very nice and soft to fit around his head very nicely. It doesn't have any issues fitting on Jason himself. All right, guys, now let's get to the actual accessories that Jason comes with. And... Once again, I'm gonna start calling this the NECA syndrome because once again, the weapons are very nicely molded and they look real nice, but the paint job quite frankly sucks. And I've been noticing that a lot on these uh, ultimate figures. Focus on this. Um, like I said, look at this, it looks great, but just the silver, just kind of a flat, boring, blade no blood no wear no anything it's just a boring silver piece of metal on the accessories and NECA I'm starting to see that they do this all the time on the screwdriver here you know it looks nice but just no blood or anything or no wear or anything on the actual screwdriver. And what is this called? This one is called Ice Axe Hammer. So they, gi they give you a nice Ice Axe Hammer. Once again, just boring silver, no blood or anything on it. You see what I mean? So, cool that he comes with these things. I wish this would focus better, there we go. Um, but I really wish, and I hope moving forward, they'll start putting a little more detail in the actual weapons when uh, when it comes to these slasher figures that they put out because these guys use these as killing weapons they kill people with these weapons and there's not a drop of blood to be seen and here's the fire poker but it just seems like there's a lot of fire pokers out there um, for these slasher figures and then put those to the side his alternate hand 
It looks like it can hold maybe the ice axe hammer. Yeah, fits that pretty nice. Fits real nice in his hand that it comes with. So what is that one for? Maybe the screwdriver? Is that one too small? No. Screwdriver fits nicely in both. This one too? Yeah. If I can get it in there. Fits nicely in his hand there. And there's the alternate hand with the fire poker. Let's see if it fits in the one that he comes with. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you're gonna have an issue at all with either hand. Then why give us the alternate hand? It looks almost exactly the same. So you can see the hands here. This one kind of has a thumb that goes over the top more than opposed to the one that he comes with. Um, okay, the alternate hand there holding the ax. And let's see, I don't know if it'll fit. Yeah, you might have a hard time getting this one in. Oh, he holds it. Boom. And here's Jason holding that giant machete. <laughs> it's just gigantic. I mean, you can see how big this is. A very, very intimidating machete. Uh, very cool to actually pose him up with with this thing. And let's take the machete out. And then, like I said before, there's a holster right here on the side and it fits right in the holster here. Let's see if I can get it in. There we go. Just like that, but man is that huge. And like I said before, it's probably why he has all these cuts on his knee. Because while he's walking, he's just chopping up his kneecaps with this gigantic machete on the side of his leg. But you know, intimidating weapon, maybe not the smartest idea to carry it, but uh, that's where it's supposed to go. And let's take off his head, his stock head that he comes with. Just a peg in there with a, a ball joint and fits right in there for his alternate head. Let's stick that on. And there's Jason Voorhees with his alternate head. It's just his head wrapped in some cloth before he got the mask. So as you know, the 2009 reboot kind of took parts one, two, three, and four of the original movies, combined them into one. And this would be his uh, Friday the 13th part two phase where he had the sack on his head right there. All right, so let's go over the articulation of Jason Voorhees. So let's start at the head. So like I showed you before, is a ball joint in there with a peg. You get pretty nice movement out of his head. All right, it does flip all the way around. His hair gets all wacky and weird when you do that. <laughs> go down to his shoulders. It's a pretty nice movement in his shoulders there. And twist them up, backwards, up and down, down to his elbows. Get some nice movement out of his elbows on the hinge. And they do swivel all the way around. Down to his hands, they're on a hinge, and these do swivel all the way around as well, as you can see. But this hand here, if I show you real quick, it's on a hinge, but it looks like mine either broke, because you can see the little crack right there, where it kind of broke, but it just hinges like this. And if I peel back, his, his uh, sleeves there, you can kind of see just where it lays there. And I've never really seen that before. It's usually a peg like this, which this hand would fit in, kind of like, yeah, kind of like that, just a peg. But it's just a hole in a hinge and I just stuck it back in there. And uh, it's very, very awkward and weird. So if I put it back in, push it back in, just like that, it just hinges up and down. So um, that's pretty interesting. Next, we go down to his waist and there is a ball joint in his waist here. Get a little bit of movement back and forth and we can uh, spin him all the way around. Go down to his legs here and we can do some pretty nice splits, just like that. They do somewhat swivel on both sides and then his kneecaps do turn all the way around with a hinge on both sides. And then we go down to his feet. There is a nice rocker in his foot. Um, looks like it would swivel and turn all the way around, but it's kind of uh, limited by his pants here. 
these pants kind of won't let that go all the way around. But no need to do that anyways. I'm cool just the way it is right there. All right, so before I was comparing the 2009 reboot Jason to the Friday the 13th part two Jason, because uh, the heads that they come with and this one actually has a little bit of hair and of course Jason really isn't known for having a lot of hair, but the Friday the 13th part 2 Jason does have Hair as you can see there with his alternate head. So I just want to compare the two Height wise the two ultimates and you can see I don't know they're pretty much the same size but the 2009 uh, reboot Jason does have the edge slightly all right guys and as I mentioned in the beginning of this video I do have a second brand new Jason Voorhees from the 2009 movie still in the box never taken out and yeah I'm giving this one away so how do you win this very simple once I hit 7,000 subscribers as long as you comment on this video, you are automatically entered. So I want to get a nice early jump on this giveaway here. 7,000 subs, comment on this video, you're automatically entered. Let's get commenting and you can win this bad boy right here. I have a couple rules below in the description box, so make sure you guys check that out before you leave this video. All right guys, that's pretty much it for this video. What do you guys think of NECA's new Ultimate Jason Voorhees from the 2009 reboot? I think he's fantastic. Uh, everything looks great on the figure himself. The face is one of my favorites from the actual Ultimate series that NECA's released so far. NECA, please work on the paint job and the detail on the weapons. Uh, just this silver looking plain boring weapons just isn't cutting it. But if you guys did enjoy this video, please give me that thumbs up. Please subscribe and go!